conversation from the Y. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about the um, job shadow with Smyrna, Smyrna West um, Alternative School and the partnership with uh, the uh, Smyrna Rotary Club. Uh, we do that once a year, and the Smyrna Rotary Club has kind of acted as the PTO, uh, for lack of a better term, for the Smyrna West Alternative School. Uh, if people aren't really familiar with the, with the school, it's it's a school that um, you know if, if a kid maybe has had some disciplinary problems. Um, they may spend about over there for six weeks or so. Um, they do try to instill a lot of discipline in these in these young people, um, and we've had some in the past has come up. You know, I think last, two years ago we had a young gentleman that that was up with us, and um, uh, un uh, sadly he lost his life in a car wreck um, seven eight months ago. Uh, but uh, he had went to that school and shared his experience with it. And um, he said it was good for him. You know, uh, that was Nathan Neely. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's sad what these young people face today. We were just looking at some statistics earlier. Uh, Ian was helping me. And uh, some of the stats out there facing these young people today are we read that 53% of high school seniors have or will use drugs. Um, it's astonishing what the 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 stats are um, you heard me talk about my little brother that's a, a DEA agent and um, he was telling me that the problem is is getting worse and worse um, Atlanta now has surpassed Miami as a drug capital of the United States and um, I just don't see the turnaround and and I really don't see the discussion being out there but the one thing I'm proud of at a Rotary Club is people step up uh, like Jenny Williams is here with us and um, uh, Gabe Wilburn with uh, uh, U.S. Bank up here, and um, uh, Lori North with First Bank will be with us talking about some of their job shadow here in a little bit also. The um, job shadow program is nothing new, though. I mean, it's been going on in quite a while, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we've done this. I've, how many How many years, Jenny? I know it's, it's my third year to do it, and yeah. um, it's just rewarding for me as it is, I hope, for the students also. And I think this year we had the biggest group we've ever had. I was talking to Mrs. Davenport, the principal, and she said there was 30 participants. So that's the biggest I think we've ever had. 30 students, right? Yeah, 30, 30 students. students uh -huh. what, what do you think they get out of this, um, Mike, the, uh, the students? Well, you know, I, we went and... We had breakfast. I mean, this morning we went over crystals and and we talked about life more so than anything. And I shared with them some of the struggles I face with my two sons that, that I have and raising teenagers and, and some of the things that these kids face today. And and um, I think it's worse than what what I faced. Um, you know, I, I don't think drugs were as accessible when I was in school than they are now. Um, to me, it's just so. It just seems so. It's just so common and, and prevalent out there now. Uh, but I think the, the culture, I think movies, TV, the violence, I mean, even some of your cartoons, um, they have such negativity out there that really, um, you know, it's just it's sad what these kids deal with. But in reality, you know, life doesn't work the way. The, the TV commercials, the beer commercials, and some of this that's out there, they don't show, they didn't show that car accident. They don't show that cross out there. They don't show that mother that's brokenhearted every day from, from the time the sun comes up and the time the sun goes down. That mother's thinking about that boy that she lost. So they don't show those things. Um, and in reality, we got to see what, what these decisions cost us, and, and they cost us not only an uh, emotional cost and families hurting, mothers hurting, grandmothers hurting, but they cost us financially. They cost us with programs. They cost us with uh, heavy demands on your police and, and programs in school, your jails. Um, and it's sad what, we've, what this country has, has, has come to. You know, I don't see how we're going to turn it around. In terms of job shadowing, though, I mean, do you share a bit think, about your trade? You know, I think it is, but I think the, the essence to me, I think before you even look at a job or education is the foundation, it, and it's that foundation is the decisions. Um, and it's, uh, you know, and, and to, to, to realize every decision you make has consequences, and ethics, character, integrity, um, and people aren't going to want to do business with you if you're not ethical. You know, they might do business with you once, but that's that's the last time. You know, I do business with, with Jenny over here a lot, and I know they got a good product over there. Um, to me, the character issue is the, is the underlying foundation of any job shadow program, you know. Um, and, 
you know, I know Smyrna West steps up and does a lot. And Kay Davenport over there and her, her group does a lot. But um, I, I think it's, it's that one little element that could, that could potentially inspire uh, that child that may not have that opportunity. Jenny, uh, what did you discuss with the uh, uh, folks who were with you today, young people? Yeah. Every year that I've had either one or two students, I've made them promise me they're going to finish high school. I said, please promise me you're going to finish high school and tell them how important their education is and that you know, they have to have a positive attitude. You know, I can do this. I'm going to do this. That's, that's what you got to do. And you find out some about the circumstance and, and, and the, the struggles that they go through? Um, you know, I didn't want to know a lot about their personal. I just, I ask them a lot of questions, you know. What are your interests? What do you like doing? What do you think there'll be a job for you, you know? Have you thought any more about, you know, furthering your education? I said, you know, college isn't for everybody. I said, you have maybe a technical skill. I said, we have Motlow College here that's a two-year program. You could find your interest and, and find, um, yeah. you know, if there is a job market there. Who, who knows? Things are changing so fast. I said, you know, I, I would say anything in health care, um, education, what else? Well, you know, college isn't for everyone. No, a it's lot not. Of, a lot, a lot um, of young folks can work with their hands. Yeah, and a lot of not, technical skills. Yeah, um, but it's a uh, uh, Motlow. I mean, and, and they're busting at the seams that we, it's like we've talked about in the past. Um, uh, a lot of people going back to school, and um, unfortunately, a lot of people, they may not have a seat for them. You know, there's a lot of adults that are changing careers in midstream, and, you know, what you start out doing, the bottom drops out, then you've got to <laughs> figure out. Sure. And I, I tried to tell my two students, and they were real, really, you know, they were real attentive, and they asked me a lot of questions, but I tried to tell them to, you know, you want to, you, you're really lucky if you find a job that you love. And I yeah. said, and what you really need to do is, you know, think about the more you, more you give, the more you get. I'm real big on that. And if you, in, in, in my business, it's personal service. And well, everybody's business, it's sure. personal service. You know, the customer is king and you got to treat them like a king and try to tell them that way. But, you know, it's, it's living the golden rule, treating people like you'd like to be treated and, and just being nice. <laughs> yeah. All, all too often, you know, that, that part is missed. And many life skills can can be taught in the workplace, but today it just seems like the, the workforce is, I'm going to put in my 40 hours this week and that's it. Well, that's that's not reality. You know, that that's not the reality in any workplace if you want to succeed and move up and, and, and do well. i got to say this. It's sad that anybody is working at a job that they hate. I said, you're really lucky. And I admire somebody like Mike Sparks. He jumped you know, into a whole different career. And it takes a lot of courage to start a business. A lot of people are doing that, they say these days. They, they lost their job with the big corporation or the big company, and they're out there starting uh, a new business, finding a niche or a need where people need your help and, you know, start a business. And it's not that easy. I'm lucky. I'm, a, well, I'm actually a third-generation retailer, my grandfather, my father, and, and me. But I'd hate to have to be starting over tomorrow. <laughs> but I admire Mike Sparks for just, you know, he totally changed careers and, and anybody that does that, you know, that takes a lot of courage. And I tell them that sometimes, my students, I said, sometimes you have to do that. You know, things change and, I mean, in, in the past we, we were in the grocery business, but we couldn't be in the grocery business today. But your, but your dad, one thing about her, and anybody that's familiar with Smyrna, was familiar with your, your father, he had a work ethic that was astronomical. Yeah. I mean, He's a hard you know, worker. And, um, uh, and he, he was a visionary. Yes. I mean, yeah. the, to start a grocery store where he started at back there with the base and everything was just unheard of so it's visionaries like him or you know Bob Spivey or other people yeah, that that definitely. we know that that's willing to take those risks um, one thing that if you look at the unemployment rate and and you break that down into the um, workforce for young people you know 16 17 18 year old 19 year olds yeah. the, the, many of the jobs there are being taken by those who have lost their job. So, I mean, it's yeah. a tough, tough workforce as well. Just tough to get your foot in the door anywhere. Well, you know, I was, these you two young guys that I had with me, we, they both, you know, had about with, with drugs and, and uh, we talked about a lot of that and I, and I was sitting there thinking to myself, well, I thought about employment and I thought about the struggles they face and I thought, man, the, the temptation for easy money.